Alright gang, here's your Tinkercad tutorial for the week. Check it out, it's a cool one. It's a treasure box. Uh, what's really cool about this thing, it's fully uh, hingeable so it can close. There's even a little latch on the front, so uh, perfect for that. Special present for that special person. Alright, let's take a look at it here. Uh, I'm going to uh, click on uh, one part here, this is the top. I'm actually going to change the color just so we can have a little differentiation. Um, and so you can see we have two boxes. There's been some holes cut into them, uh, you know, a little edge taken off uh, right here. Uh, the hard part is the hinges. You see there's uh, hinges connected to both the top and the base of the box. And if I zoom in a little bit here and get the angle just right, um, you can see how um, on this tannish color of the base of the box, actually there's a pin that goes into the, the hinge. There's a receiving hole in that hinge. So this one can 3D print and it'll 3D print just like what you see on the screen. But um, when you're done with it, you can, it'll hinge up and it will close. And it'll look something yeah, kind of like that. Not really lining it up perfect here, just kind of pulling it into place um, so you can see it. <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it'll hinge open. Trust me, it'll be awesome. All right, uh, I'm going to undo a few steps here just so I get it back to being a good example. And then I'm going to just drag this example off to the side and get it out of the way. All right, um, we're going to start by just making some boxes. And then the second uh, step will be doing the hinges. So I'm going to grab a box. I'm going to drag it in. Let me get at a little bit better view here. And now this box, uh, let's type in a few dimensions here. We are going to make it uh, 50. So click on a little uh, uh, gray square and do 50 by 40. And then for the height for this one, we can just leave that at 20. Okay. And then I need a couple copies of this box. Uh, we'll call this one uh, the base of my treasure box. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna do Command D for duplicate and I'm gonna just drag it off to the side. All right, that's gonna be the top of my treasure box. And then I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna do Command D uh, for duplicate. I'm gonna drag this off to the side here. And I'm gonna change this one from a solid to a whole. Um, next step is uh, I'll get um, this to be just the right size so it'll cut the hole in the base of the treasure box. And then we'll do a similar technique for the uh, top of the treasure box as well. All right, so I want the walls of this treasure box to be four millimeters. So it's going to be four millimeters on the left side, four millimeters on the right side, and then, of course, four millimeters on the top and bottom as well. Um, so I'm going to change the dimensions of my hole. So I will click on the little gray handlebar there. Right now it is 50 by 40. I want to subtract both of those wall thicknesses. So that's four and four. So I'm going to subtract eight. So 50 minus eight is going to give me 42. And then same thing over here. Uh, 40 minus 8 will give me 32. Right. And then I also want to leave a little bit of a, a floor, a base on the um, of the treasure box. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the black cone. I'm going to pop it up 4 millimeters. So I'm going to click and then just go 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, you know what? I've been playing around with the uh, snapping the, the grid to different measurements. Right now, my grid was at 0.1. Um, I want to put that back at, at, at one millimeter, so every time I move it, it moves in one millimeter increments. But this is also a good time to point out that uh, you can change those, uh, those snap grids. You can change how much it moves each time you, you bump it one over. Uh, we're going to have to do that a bunch um, as we uh, finish this treasure box. So I'm going to change mine back to one, and then I'm going to uh, bring it up one, two, three, four. So up four millimeters. All right, now I'm just going to align these uh, two objects and cut it out, and I'll have the base of my treasure box. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select uh, the base of my treasure box. So I now have the hole and the base selected and then I'll come up to the align command and I'm going to align them on the X and I'm going to align them on the Y. But I'm not going to change anything with the Z axis. I got it up four millimeters just the way I wanted it. So now I have them both selected and when I group them, there we go. I have the start of my uh, treasure box. Thanks. All right, let's uh, start working on the top here too. So I'm going to select the top. I'm gonna to do Command D for duplicate and I'm gonna pull it straight off to the side. I'm gonna turn that into a hole. Right, so that's gonna be my cutter at, at, uh, coming up here. Uh, let me move this other piece just out of the way for right now. 
It looks kind of sculpted. I mean, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a treasure box. So I really like the look. If you let's see our example over here, where, um, where we're kind of chamfer off uh, the, the two corners there. It gives it a cool box look. Um, so let's cut those corners off. I'm going to start by grabbing a roof and dragging that one in. Now I need to do a little bit of rotating. So I'm going to uh, uh, rotate it uh, so that it's kind of pointing up. So I'll grab the bendy arrow there. I'm going to rotate it over until it's... flat on the work plane there. And then I'm going to change these dimensions a little bit. That's a little too much of a chamfer, I think. Um, what was I doing before? 10 and 10. Um, so I'm going to make this guy 10 millimeters deep. I'm going to go 10 millimeters high. And then for the length, actually I want this length to be you know super big, so I'll just type in like 70. And because I'm going to use that as kind of, oops, I'm going to use that as kind of a cutter um, to cut there. And in fact, I'm going to make it a hole. And then I'm going to align these guys, but I'm not going to align to the center like I've been doing um, uh, previously in this video and in all the other stuff. I'm going to align it on the edge. So I'll hold down shift and I have the box and the, um, the little roof wedge uh, selected and I'll hit the align command. And instead of hitting that center circle uh, where it's going to put it in the middle, I'm going to hit it uh, on the left hand side and you can see it lines it up on the left hand side. I'm just going to orbit around, make sure that that thing is long enough. It's not quite long enough, or actually it is long enough, it's just not um, in the right position. So I'm just going to grab it and pull it straight across, holding down the shift key too so it doesn't move on the X axis, only on the Y axis. All right. And that looks pretty good. Although somehow I think it is a little high. It somehow got off the work plane. I think it was when I was rotating it. Um, so I'm going to hit the letter D. And that drops it down on the uh, on the work plane. You could also do that by grabbing the little um, black cone there too. All right. Looks good. Uh, let's uh, do a second one and we'll flip it over and we'll cut off that other edge too. So I'll do Command D for duplicate. I'll pull it straight over here. And then I'll use the mirror command up here. And then I get two arrows, three arrows actually. I can mirror it in any of the three axes. I'm going to mirror it on this one. It's going to flip over there. All right. And then I'm going to bring it until it's right on the edge there. Take a quick look at it. And that looks good. All right, now I could uh, cut these right now. I could group them all together and cut them right now. Uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, actually make a copy of this and pull it off to the side. That's going to be the one that I'm going to use for my hole. So actually, I don't need that that one right there. Um, this is one that I want to copy. So I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to do Command D for duplicate. I'm going to pull it off to the side. I'll come back to that in just a second. All right, back on my top. I'll select my box and my little wedges. I'll group them up. And there you go. Start a little treasure chest top. Um, now I need to uh, cut out the inside there. Um, so remember, I want to keep four millimeter walls. So I need to uh, shrink this thing up by four millimeters. So I'm going to click on um, click on the big box, and I am going to um, click on the gray handlebar there. And I need four and four for the two walls. Uh, so that's 8. So again, I'm going to subtract 8 from 50, which gives me 42. And then 32 for the width. All right. Um, now uh, I need to move my wedges around just a little bit here. So move it like that. Uh, looks like I'm lined up. And now I can group those. And I got my cool little wedge. Um, now I just need to move it up four millimeters. So I'll select it and I'll click on the little uh, gray cone or black cone and go up one, two, three, four. I'm going to turn this to a hole and then I'm going to align them. So I'll select them both, hit the align command, and align it on the X and on the Y. I don't want to do anything with the Z. I got it four millimeters up. So when I group these guys, 
I got myself top. Alright. So line them up a little bit here. Okay, now, if we printed it like this, um, it wouldn't be a very good treasure box. It would kind of slip and slide around. We do want to have a little bit of a lip on there, um, as you can see in the example. So we have a lip on the base and then a little uh, inset uh, on the top there. So when this thing hinges up, it, it'll, it'll close up much, much nicer. All right, so let's uh, start with the base here. I am going to um, uh, drag in another box. And my first box was uh, 50 by 40. I want to have a, and it has a four millimeter wall. I want to have a two millimeter uh, cutout in there. I'm sorry, on the, on the base, uh, two millimeter uh, bump coming up. Um, so I need to start by um, taking this guy and changing it. Um, there's going to be two millimeters and two millimeters subtracted from each side. So that's four millimeters I need to subtract from my original sides. So sorry if it's getting confusing here. It was the first one was 50 by 40. Yeah. Uh, that's what we started with. I'm going to change that to um, uh, minus two and minus two, so that's minus four. So I'm going to change that to 46 by 36. And then I want this to be a two millimeter lip. So on the Z axis, I'm going to make this guy a two millimeter. Right. Um, so I could put this up in place, but I also need to uh, I need to cut it out so that there's a there's a hole in the middle of it, so I can still put my goodies in the treasure box. So I'm going to duplicate this, slide the duplicate off to the side for just a second. I'm going to change this into a hole, and then I want to make this one two millimeters uh, smaller in both the x and the y axis than the original uh, piece. So I'm going to select this one and click on the little gray arrow and again I will subtract 4. So I'm going to make that 42, make that 32 and just for fun I'm going to crank the height up just a little bit and now when I select both my hole and that rectangle I was just working with and align them on the X and Y when I group them, I should get a cool little rim. All right, now I just need to put that up on top of there. Easiest way to do that is to move your work plane. So I'll click on the work plane. I'm going to click on top of my box. And now when I select my, um, my little lip there, I'll hit D to drop it on the work plane. And now I can just line those guys up. I'm going to put my work plane back to where it was by clicking work plane and just kind of clicking off. And then with my little rim selected and the base of my treasure box selected, I'm going to align them on the X and on the Y. All right, now I have a little lip. Now I just need to do the little recess and then the box will be all done. I'll just have to move on to the hinges next. Okay, so I need to um, bring in another box and uh, turn this one into a hole. And I'm just going to um, make a box that is two millimeters bigger than this opening and, um, and then uh, use it as a cutter. So that opening is going to be, let me double check here, the outside opening is 50 by 40. That interior one would be eight millimeters less on both of those numbers. So it's going to be uh, 40, 42 and 32. So I'm going to do it. 42 uh, 32 now I need to move it up and into position I'm going to uh, move my work plane so that it is on top of my treasure box I'm going to take my hole hit the letter D drop it on the work plane and now I can align these guys put my work plane back first by clicking on work plane just clicking back anywhere then I'll select both of these objects and I will align them on the X and on the Y. Okay. But it's just sitting on top. I actually want it to be a, um, a, a down in it. 
And actually, I screwed up. It, I, I made it the exact same size. Um, I want it to be two millimeters bigger on both sides. So I'm going to select my hole again and click on the little gray handlebar. And I need to make that uh, two millimeters on both sides. So that's add four. So 46 and 36. There. Now I can't forget to realign it. So align on the X and on the Y. There it is. So now it's sitting right on top. A um, little bit bigger than the previous hole. I need to just bring it down two millimeters. So I'll click on the little gray cone and go. Oops, I have them both selected. I'll click off and just select the hole and then come down one, two. Now when I group them up, I have a little recessed hole there. All right. So now they'll latch together really nicely. Okay, let me get them lined up here, and then we'll work on that hinge. I never group those. Let me group both of those. And just for fun, I'm going to change the color, because red is a little hard to work with. All right. get the example in there you can see we're pretty close just got to work on that hinge all right to make this hinge let's start by looking at the hinge itself or the example hinge we have over here um, and so you can see that the the hinge itself is made up of three different shapes there is a uh, little wedge here that's going to be the roof we'll grab that um, there's going to be a box or I'm sorry a, yeah a box and then there is a little half, half roof, yeah, or round roof right there. Um, so we're going to put those three pieces together. But then let me show you what's going on inside this. So I'm going to select uh, one of them. In this case, I have the base selected. I'm going to come up here to the color. I'm going to make it transparent so we can kind of see what's going on inside there. There's a little dimple. There's a little pin um, that is going out, and it's going into a little receiver slot that is uh, on the top. And there's one coming from uh, both sides there. Oops, sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to rotate around here so you can see this a little better. There we go. Um, so it's coming in from that side as well. Um, so let's start by making that basic shape, uh, and then we're going to copy it a bunch of times. All right. Okay, I am going to drag the top just out of the way a little bit, and we are going to work on putting a hinge right on that surface there. So I'm going to bring a roof in, and I'm going to rotate it. I'll hit D, drop it down on the work plane, and then I'm going to change these dimensions a little bit here. Uh, let's go for, let's go, um, five Oops. actually I think we can go five all around five by five by five and then I need to uh, rotate it again it looks like so that it is in that orientation now I want to move this uh, to the surface there. The easiest way to move that to the surface is to make that into the work plane. So I'll click the work plane button. I'm going to click on that side. And then I'm going to select my little wedge. Hit D to drop it on to the work surface. Our work plane. And then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it for right now. And just put it up about where that hinge should be. And I'm going to put my work plane back where it was. And I'll start doing that second piece. That's going to be a box. And I want to make this one five. The same numbers, five by five. And actually, the height's going to be a little bit lower. Let's do 2.5. Actually, I think I screwed up on one number on this hinge, too. I don't want it to be exactly five coming out. I want it to have a little extra. So I'm going to change that dimension to six. See, I just kind of stretched it out a little bit. And now I'm going to put that box on top of that little wedge. 
I'm making the top of that wedge the work plane. Selecting my box, hitting D to drop it onto the work plane. And now Line them up, and I can actually select them both by holding the shift key, and I can hit the align command, and I want it to be aligned not in the middle, but kind of right on that end there. And I'm also going to align it that way. Alright, so you can see we got that shape going. Now I did, um, I think I pulled it off of the surface there a little bit. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, that's okay, I'll fix that in a second. Alright, next step, I am going to take a rounded roof. I'm going to drop that one on. And i got to shrink this up a little bit. Those will be those same 5x5 five five numbers. So 5x5. Five by five. And then the height on this one, I'm going to do a 0.25. And then I'm going to move that on top of my box by making the top of that box a work plane. I'm going to select my round roof, hit D to drop it onto the work plane. And then I will align all those objects. So I got um, all, all three of them selected. And I'm going to align it on the end also on that axis. So that's looking pretty good right there. I'm going to select them all. I think I can go ahead and group them up. I'm going to change my work plane back to um, the side of that thing. And first I'll change it just off so it's out of the way and then I'm going to change the work plane back to the side of my treasure box so that I can put um, my little wedge here, I guess it's a hinge now, back on it by hitting D. I'll change my work plan back. Alright, there we go, getting started. I might use that shape a few different times, so I'm just going to duplicate it and drag a copy off to the side, so I'll do Command D. I have two of them. I'm just going to drop one off over there because I'm going to need that. Uh, All right, I also want to make sure that this is in perfect position right now, it actually looks a little bit low. And what we want is we kind of want it um, so that it's centered on the box. So I'm going to look at it straight from the side here. Zoom in a little bit. And then I want to bring this up until this edge is centered with that box. So I'm going to come straight up. I actually think that's where I want it. So it's kind of on, it's actually not centered on the box, but um, on the line between where the rounded roof and the box used to be. Yep. So that looks like it's the right height. Let's start working on the other end of this hinge that's going to go on the top of the box. So I'm going to select the hinge, do Command D for duplicate, and I'm going to pull it straight off to the side here. And then I need to mirror it. I need to flip it over. So I'm going to hit the mirror button. I'm going to flip it so it looks like that, and now I need to just uh, align it um, on that face. So I'm going to change the work plane to that face of my treasure box. With that part of the hinge selected, I'll hit D to drop it onto that work surface. Right, I'll put my work plane back where it was. Alright, let's see how it's lining up here. Uh, let me look at this from the pure top view. And First I want to get these are the boxes aligned actually just do it I'm gonna align this box the top of the box and the bottom of the box so that they're perfectly aligned and then I'm gonna move this one until it's just kind of on the inside of the other one And this is where I was telling you we might need to change this grid snap a little bit. Right now, um, it's lining up and it's actually overlapping a little bit. If I did a full millimeter off, it would be a, a, a little bit um, too big of a gap. 
So I'm gonna change that to my uh, snap grid to half a millimeter. And I can kind of creep up on it. We do want a little bit of space there. All right, but that's looking pretty good. I think that's gonna line up nicely. I'm using the arrow keys to kind of bump it along. So that's gonna line up perfectly. Let's get to work on that pin. I'm gonna pull these guys off. So we got a little separation here, a little room to work, and I'm gonna bring in a cone. I'm gonna change the size of this cone. This time I'm gonna use the uh, values up over here. I'm gonna do the uh, base radius. I'm gonna do that one at two, the top radius at one. Let's do the height at two. So I went from having a cone to having a short little cutoff cone. I want to put it up on that surface of the, of the hinge there. So I'm going to select it. I need to rotate it. And then I'm going to drop it onto that surface using the work plane tool. D to drop it onto the work plane. And I'm going to go line it up. I don't want to get this centered, so I'm going to look at it straight from the side view here. Zoom in a little bit. And that does look centered to me. Ah, that'll work. Alright, so there's the little dimple. Now I'm going to use this same little dimple, the same little pin, um, but I'm going to uh, uh, use it to make the hole in the other side. So I'm going to select that uh, little dimple. I'm going to do a Command D to duplicate it. I'm going to drag it off to the side and turn it into a hole. And now, I rotate around the other side here. Should be able to just take it and kind of line it up. Again, I got to get it perfectly centered, so I'll look at it straight from the side. not quite able to move it uh, with enough sensitivity so I'm going to change my snaps to a millimeter and there we go that looks good but it's actually it's sticking out a little bit so I'm going to uh, play with my work plane a little click the work plane tool set it back down to the original base and then take the work plane tool and set it on that surface, the surface of my hinge, I'm going to grab the little hole dimple and hit D. Oh. Let's do it by hand. There it is. Lined up perfect. Right, let me put my work plane back. It's easier to see with that not there. Alright. We look good. Now I haven't grouped this thing yet. Um, when I do, there'll be a little dimple there, but actually I want to have a really strong hinge, so I'm going to have a pin come in from both sides. So let me select that hole, and just so I can see things a little bit better, I'm actually going to select the hinge and make it transparent. And then I will select that little hole, and I will duplicate it, so Command D, and I will mirror it on that axis, and then I'm going to use the arrow keys to just kind of slide it out of there. Remember when it changes colors is when they're at the same surface. All right, that is looking good. Now I can group all three of those objects. I'm going to drag a little box and group all three of them together. I'm going to take the transparency off. And now we should see a little dimple on that side and a little dimple on that side. Well, working pretty good. Uh, let me just duplicate this um, hinge that has the pin sticking out and flip it over. So I'm going to select both of those objects. Command D for duplicate. And then I'm going to hit the mirror button. And mirror it on that axis. Use the arrow keys to... Oops. The arrow keys to move it out. Mm -hmm. 
and then I just need to get these things aligned. So I'm going to look at it purely from the top view. I think I'm going to make um, that one hinge transparent so I can see what's going on inside there. I'm going to select my box and the hinge I'm working with here. I know it's sticking off the side. We can fix that in a little bit. I want to select all of that stuff and bring it closer. So I'm just using the arrow keys to move this. And it is now every arrow is going just 0.1 millimeters. Um, but that's okay. I'm a patient man. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far. Um, so this one on the right, that's what we want it to look like. We don't want it to be right inside there. We want to have a little bit of a gap, so it's got some uh, uh, fr uh, freedom of movement there. So I will select both parts of that hinge and then just using the arrow keys, just bumping it in until it's at that same level. Is the other one. Ah, looks good. Uh, my hinge is kind of sticking out to the side a little bit though, so let me select all of these guys, the entire hinge, and then using the arrow keys, I'm going to bring it in. And I think as a reference, I'm just going to line it up with that little lip line. That'll be fine. There you go. One hinge all set. Now, pretty darn easy to get that second hinge. I'm going to look at it straight from the top. And I will drag a skinny little selection box. So I'm just selecting that hinge. Do control D. Now I will also change my grid snaps back to one millimeter. And I'll just bump it over there using the arrow keys. it lines up in the same spot. All right, looking good. And we can print it just like this. Um, and then when you start doing it, uh, when you start folding it over after the print job, it you know it'll be a crunch for just a second. Um, but that gap will open up, and it'll work pretty darn well. All right, so there is our box. There's our hinge. Hey, if you're having fun. Let's go for the final touch. That's going to be the latch. Um, and that's why I copied this part over here. I'm going to turn this into a little latch for the front. Um, so I'm going to start by flipping it over using the mirror command. And then I'm going to uh, put it on the surface of that using the work plane tool. D to drop it on there. I'll kind of move it over it's roughly in the middle. I think that'll be actually yeah, I want to go ahead and um, and get it right in the middle I'm gonna put my work plane back where it is in order for me to align these things I do want to do a little bit of grouping so I want to group the top and the base of the treasure box you know all in one unit um, I'm sorry actually they'll be in their own parts I'm gonna click on the top I'm gonna to hold down shift and I'm gonna click on the hinge I'm gonna click on the uh, hinge only the hinge only in the middle of the hinge the part that belongs with the top um, wait, I got that backwards. I'm going to select the top and I'm going to click on the outside parts of the hinge. Those are the parts that belong with the top and I'm going to group them up. Right. Oh, unfortunately that did not group the little cones. Let me get in there and do that real quick. I'm going to hold down, I'm going to select the top, I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to click on the purple, purple, Purple and the purple. Now I group them up. So there's the top. Then it'll be a little bit quicker to do the base. Click on the base, and hold down shift, and then click on the two hinge parts and group those up. So now I only have three objects on my screen the top of the box, the bottom of the box, and then this little pin that I'm working on. I wanted to do that grouping because now I can get that centered no problem by selecting everything on the screen, hitting the align command, and then aligning it on that axis. Now I know that pin is, is right in the middle. Okay, I'm going to make a little hole. So I'm going to grab a cylinder, bring that cylinder in. I'm going to rotate it. 
going to shrink it up quite a bit. So I'm going to get this to be a 2 millimeter um, diameter. So I'm going to click on that Z axis, turn that to 2. I'm going to click on the um, little gray handlebar for the X and Y and do 2. This is going to be a hole. I'm going to switch it over to a hole, and now I need to um, now I need to move it up onto that surface. So I'll use the work plane tool. I'll hit D to drop my cylinder on that work surface. Trying to get a hold of that. I'm going to look at it purely from the side. And I want to have that centered, which it looks like it is. Okay. I'm put my work plane back. And then I'm just going to cut that hole. So I'm going to grab it and stretch it out. formed on me a little bit. Let me type in the number. Type in a width of 20, or length of 20. Now I can just slide it in there and hold down shift so I have both those objects selected and group them. Make that hole. Right, so there is the uh, front latch. Um, now I just need to do that same thing on the other side. So I'm going to look at it straight from the top. I'm going to select my piece. I'm going to do Control D to copy it. Straight down. Need to mirror it. I'm going to put it on that surface using the work plane tool. Put my work plane back where it was. at this straight from the top. I'm going to move it over. Um, this is a five millimeter box, so I want to move it over um, five. So that's one, two, three, four, five, just using the arrow keys. And then I'm going to hit Control or Command D to duplicate. I'm going to put it back where the other one was. So I'll use the arrow keys to do one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go another five. One, two, three, four, five. And just to give it a little bit of extra play, I'm going to change my snap grid to a quarter millimeter. And I'm just going to bump it off each one of these to the left and to the right, just kind of opening up that gap just a little bit more. Um, just so the, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect to have a little wiggle room in there. All right, there you go. And if we want to make it look just like our example, we'll select everything. Change the color. And we have made kick-ass treasure box. Good job.